You saw the thumbnail, everyone is wrong. First of all, they don't take into account the amount of force required to jump with this weight, which turns out to be way more than I expected. And second of all, Netherite isn't even the heaviest block in the game. Blue Ice might actually be the winner, so first, let's compare the two. So a block of netherite is actually hard to calculate exactly how heavy it is since we don't know the weight of ancient debris, but we do know that netherite is at least four times denser than gold. So that means a block of netherite is at least as heavy as four blocks of gold. Each block is a cubic meter, and a cubic meter of gold weighs 19,300 kilograms. So a block of netherite weighs a minimum of 77,200 kilograms. But a block of blue ice is actually made up of nine blocks of packed ice, and each packed ice is, consists of nine blocks of ice, or nine cubic meters of water. So that means in each block of blue ice, there's 81 cubic meters of water. A cubic meter of water is exactly a thousand kilograms. So that means there's 81,000 kilograms in a single block of blue ice. Now we can pack this blue ice into a shulker and each fits 1,728 blue ice. This means that each shulker weighs about 140 million kilograms. And now since we have 37 inventory slots, we multiply this by 37, getting a carry weight of 5,178,816,000 kilograms. And even that is impressive, that means he can hold 34,352 blue whales on his back, or the Great Pyramid of Giza. But what every other YouTuber forgot, is that while holding the pyramid on his back, this dude jumps over a meter high. But that's not even all. With a jump boost 2 effect, Steve can jump 2.5 meters high. But the craziest part is, he doesn't even bend his legs to jump. Wait, right, right now, try jumping without bending your legs. Is impossible, right? So this is gonna be the biggest leap of judgment in this video, but that means he probably only uses his calves to jump, not even using his upper legs like his quads or his glutes at all to jump. But since we don't have a measurement of Steve's calf, I had to make a few assumptions. Since both Steve and I are exactly six foot two, I measure the distance between my foot flat and completely extended to measure the length of Steve's calf, and that totaled to about 10 centimeters. And finally, to do the calculation, we also need to figure out how strong Minecraft's gravity was. Thankfully someone did the work already for me, and it turns out that Minecraft's gravity is three times stronger than Earth's. So this means, while jumping, Steve is holding three pyramids of Giza, not just one. And now, here comes the heavy math part. So the first step is to figure out what the takeoff velocity Steve has to have to jump up two and a half meters. So we can use this initial velocity equation. But first, let's define our variables. U is our initial velocity, or what we're solving for. V represents our final velocity at the end of the jump, which is just zero, so we can cancel this out. A represents our force of gravity, which is negative since it's pulling us down, and S is the two and a half meters that we jumped. So to solve for U, we just plug in our variables and square root both sides, which gives us an initial velocity of roughly nine meters per second. So now, the next step is to figure out the acceleration of Steve's calf. This will tell us how fast his calf had to accelerate in order to get his body moving at 8.95 meters per second with only 10 centimeters of space. Then the number we get from this can tell us how much force he put through the ground. So thankfully, we can use the same equation as before, but instead isolating A. Our variables this time will be zero for initial velocity, where that's where his calf is flat. V will be 8.95 meters per second that we found earlier. A is a variable we solve for, and S is 0.1 meters, or 10 centimeters for his calf. So now all we have to do is plug in all of our variables, and then we divide both sides by 2 and 0.1 to isolate A. A is then equal to 400 meters per second squared, which is like 40 times faster than a Lamborghini. Now, the last step is to find the force required to make this acceleration with 5.1 billion kilograms on Steve's back. This calculation is simple, where it's just the force of acceleration plus the additional force of gravity that we're fighting. Since force is mass times acceleration, we end up with this equation, with M being the weight of all that blue ice, A being the takeoff velocity we found earlier, and G being the acceleration of gravity. So, multiplying all this together totals to 2 trillion 123 billion 314 million newtons of force. And since this was applied over a course of 0.1 meters, the total joules is rounded to 200 billion joules. Put this energy into perspective, that's 48 million calories, which means that each jump burns 13,500 pounds of fat. This amount of calories is in 27 Minecraft cakes or 160,000 lamb chops. With all this energy, you could power a city for 200 seconds. But what's crazy, that's not even all of it. Steve can jump really fast when he hits his head and do head hitters over and over. And after doing some experiments, I found out that he can jump around seven times a second, meaning he can generate 1.4 trillion joules every second. 
To put that in context, a standard nuclear power plant generates 26 trillion joules of energy a day, meaning Steve would just have to jump for 19 seconds to produce that much energy. And now, currently, the world consumes around 580 quintillion joules every year, and if Steve banged his head on the ceiling for a year straight, he would produce around 44 quintillion joules. So what that means is that if we had 14 Steves banging their head on the ceiling, their jumps would be enough to power the entire world. But what's even crazier is that there's some mobs that can carry and jump with Steve on them, meaning they're as strong as Steve, or maybe even stronger. So pigs, striders, camels, donkeys, mules, and horses, they're all comparable to nuclear bombs with their jumping strength. But in fun fact I found when recording this, if you have a high knockback stick and hit a pig with a saddle and then left click simultaneously, you can send yourself flying. But back to the video. To make Steve even stronger, you could think about all the potion effects he can consume. Like with just strength 2, he's 30% stronger. So if his arms are at all comparable to his legs, this guy should be able to destroy cities with ease. So Steve is just a powerhouse, and if he used his entire body, only one Steve would be enough to power the entire world. And this dude can just generate billions of joules of force with only his calves. All he needs is some potatoes and he'll be as strong as nuclear reactors. So maybe the reason that he dies of fall damage is because of the massive muscle in this guy's body. 